Hey there everybody and welcome back. For those of you that are looking to learn how to password protect your website, I'm going to be covering two different methods in today's video, both of which can be done completely free. So before we get started, don't forget to like and subscribe and check out the channel for new content. All right, so jumping straight in, on the right-hand side, I have a resume builder website that I built. It's over at codelessfix.app, though this will be changing over time, um, so you'll see different pages there. Point is, I also have the website hosting service on the left-hand side, basically just your file hosting panel, so to speak. So the idea is when you go online and get your website built, you'll typically have access to some kind of a panel like this, which will show your public underscore HTML, kind of like your home directory. And in this case, you can ignore the majority of all these extra files. All you need to know is this website here corresponds to all of these files down here. The remainder of these folders, or most of them, are subdomains. So they're, you know, codelessfix.app slash coffee canine, for example. That'll bring up this website here. But in this case, all we need is the root directory. Now, you may notice in most cases, you'll have an HT access file. If you don't, no big deal. So we're gonna walk through the two different methods to get this set up. So method number one, you can go in Hostinger and in your panel, you can go into the hosting section and it should bring you to a dashboard that looks similar to this. And over on this side, right over here, we can actually type in password. And then when you do this, under advanced, you'll see password protect directories. So here we'll type in a username like test, and then I'm just gonna type in a sample password. And then we'll click protect. And you'll see that we now have it protected down here. And if you're interested, you can actually go into this web hosting service and you'll see that we now have an HT access file updated a few seconds ago and an HT password file. Now, once you've done this, if we were to try to access this site again, you'll see that when I refresh the page, assuming it's not going to be caching, so there are a few cases where you may need to go in an incognito window, you could paste in literally the same exact thing, and you'll see we now get this sign-in page where I would have to type in the password and the username. I'm going to type in the wrong password just to show you that it won't actually access the page. And then we will type in the correct password. And now you'll see the page loads as expected. So that's basically method one for those of you that are using Hostinger. One cool thing about it is when you go to your HT password file, you're going to see that this has been encrypted, so you don't have a way to access and basically make edits or changes to this file. So the idea is it's not something that is going to be easy for someone to just grab and, you know, kind of figure out or hack on the back end. So that's option one. What we're going to do now is we are going to go back into Hostinger and we are going to delete the file or we're going to delete that password protected directory. And then we'll refresh this page and you'll see the HT password has been deleted and this has been updated and the file size is smaller, which basically has no content now. So now we're gonna go to method two and I will show two different websites, although there are plenty of other resources online for this. So the first one here is going to be a resource over at lcn.com. I'm not affiliated with them in any way. But this walks you through exactly how to make and set this up. And the reason I'm using this as an example is because they actually have the password encryption here. But one thing to note is you're going to want to make sure that your password is encrypted by a service that you trust. That way you don't have to worry about any security issues. So make sure you do this in accordance with any and all applicable and relevant laws, rules, guidelines, etc. All right, so let's go ahead and do this. You'll see right here, we have a couple of things to make a note of. So if you want to do a shortcut, for example, if you have Hostinger, then we can try to password protect our directory one more time because we are going to need to get our location for the password file. So in this case, when I go to HT access, 
you'll see that I have a directory right here, which is the location of this file. So what we can do is I'm actually just going to grab this. That way I know exactly what I need and I'll paste it over here just in a random browser elsewhere. Then what we'll do is we're going to go ahead and confirm delete on this. And we're going to go through this as if we are doing this together. So I'll close this, click OK. All the files have been deleted. We're now doing this from scratch. So we are in our home directory. And you'll see in this page here, we're going to create our .ht access file. So what we can do is you'll see we basically just need to create a file and call it .ht access. In this case, I already have one here, and you'll see it's literally just a file called ht access. And if you want to, you can go in and delete it. And then when you're in your directory or in your folder, you'll have an option to click new file, and you could just call it ht access. And then you have, you can usually just click save, and you'll see that you now have that file and it'll look a little bit grayed out. So what we're going to do is we're going to create the contents of this file. So you'll see we're going to use something just like this, which is going to be very similar to what Hostinger creates automatically when you password protect your directory. So we are going to then open this HT access file, paste in this content. And then all we're going to do that's just going to be a little bit different is we're going to go back here and we're going to make sure that we're pasting this content in right here. So you'll see it's actually using the same verbiage auth user file. So we're going to go here, paste it. And then the next file is actually going to be called .ht password. But this is the content that we need for our ht access. So we're now going to close this. And then in the same place, we're going to put new file and we're going to call it .ht password without the O or the R. And then we're just going to save it and back out. And this is kind of your quick way to check and make sure that it's appearing correctly. Um, so we see that it's there. And now we're going to go back to this website here and you'll see it breaks it down in further detail. But really, all that you need to do is make sure that you have your username and password pair. So in this case, in our HT access password, you'll see that we're going to have basically a username password combo. And we'll assign that here. So in this case, you can actually type in the username and password that you want to create. So you'll see in this case, if we were to refresh the page, we will scroll up, we'll type in username, we'll call it test, and then password, we'll type in a sample password, and we'll put hash my password. So now we can copy this text here. And then we can go to our HT password, click Save. And then we can test these changes. So let's try to get this website and then we'll go into an incognito window just to make sure we're not caching an old version. We're going to type in our new password and username and then you'll see it lets us log in. Now just to verify that this is working as expected, let's try changing this password here. So what we're going to do is we're going to call it something very, very simple. So we'll see if we can use the same username and password just to see if it'll let us. And again, just make it simple. Then we will paste it in here, save our changes, refresh this page. We'll type in TEST. We'll try to copy and paste, sign in, and you'll see it lets you log in just fine. So everything is working as expected for this website. Now, the only other thing that we need to double check is basically just to make sure that any other incorrect password will not let you log in to the site. 
So we'll type in test and then we'll type in some extra text and you'll see it is not signing us in and shows an unauthorized page in the event that you don't have the right password. Now, the only other thing that I want to leave you with is a couple of ideas or resources. So you'll see in this page here, we basically said, this is my username, this is my password, and then you'll see it encrypts it. So you'll see the username and password are separated by a colon, but then the password's encrypted, and there are tons of resources online. So there are different encryption methods, but the idea here is you can go to different websites, for example, you could go to this HT password generator website, which are basically the first two links or first few links over at Google. And you can just type in your username and password combination. You can learn more about the different encryption methods. So those are just the two options that I wanted to provide you with for this video. So I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment box below and I'll see you all in the next video.